one hello all welcome back to another edition of the josh potter show here inside of the roach motel so happy to have you after my second weekend in las vegas in a row the fact that i am alive so spry and ready to do a program is a testament to the true broadcaster that i am i feel wonderful not quite like last time when I returned home with Annie Letterman. And thank you so much, by the way, if you checked out episode 77 last week with Annie Letterman. I know it was a bit of a different episode. It ended up sort of devolving into what is us hanging out. <laughs> I mean, that's what happens when we're hanging out or when we're talking on the phone. I mean, I didn't get to the news or the sports, and uh, we kind of just hung out for an hour. And it was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, But Annie wants to come back and actually do the show next time. She said, she's like, next time I come, let's do the sports and all that. I go, yeah, okay. We'll get you back in and do all of that. I want to say thank you, though, to everybody who said what's up, uh, whether it be in Tucson, was there for a blip of time Thursday night with Tom Segura, and then we did two shows at the Mirage in Las Vegas, and what a time. Oh, my Lord. There's a couple stories that I won't tell on this program, but I'll tell them on the Patreon, and you can get subscribed. The link is in the description. Patreon.com slash The Josh Potter Show. Five bucks a month, that's all it takes. You get an extra podcast and a few other bells and whistles, too. Also up there is an hour of me on stage during the Milwaukee incident. If you know, you know. So go get subscribed to that. Other than that, we have some shows that have just gone on sale. May 19th, I will be in Indianapolis at Helium Comedy Club. And then June 2nd, I will be in Philadelphia at Helium Comedy Club. All those tickets just went on sale. Later on in the summer, July, San Diego at the brand new Mike Drop Comedy Club. Get tickets for that. Four shows happening at that place. And boy, oh boy, am I excited for that. And then five shows in Chicago. I'm coming in the summertime, August. Those are also on sale, and we're going to have some dates start to trickle in in the interim, in between. And I'm also going to be with Annie uh, at Cobb's Comedy Club April 15th through 16th. That's coming up here in the next couple of weekends. So if you're out in San Francisco and you're going to go see Annie, you'll see me there as well. I'm very excited about that. Instagram at Josh underscore Potter. Twitter at J underscore Potter is how you can stay connected to everything under the sun when it comes to the roach over here. Oh, boy. Yeah, there's a story I'm not going to tell on this, but I'll tell it on the Patreon. (laughs) Let's just say it involves a strip club in Las Vegas. And basically, all the money that I won with Annie... I spent it there. I put it back into the uh, Las Vegas ecosystem, if you will. And boy, oh boy, was it ever worth it, in my opinion. So here we are on the program, and uh, we are just a day removed from the slap heard around the world. Will Smith going up in the Oscars, slapping Chris Rock. And boy, oh boy, I thought... During the Nice Boy Clock, we will talk about such not, uh, a not-so-nice boy, Will Smith. And this thing, I mean, everyone's had every take under the sun. There's really nothing new that I have to say about it. But I wanted to watch it because I think there's something interesting about it. As uh, You know, Chris Rock being a comic, being the type of comic that he is. Boy, oh boy, he left some meat on the bone. And I think he did it deliberately. I think he just kind of moved on. Let's watch it real quick here. This is uh, because we don't want to get taken off of YouTube. Here is a uh, sort of bootleg version of what happened uh, via Australian television. Here it is. Right there is the pivotal moment in the final seconds of that clip. If we could, when he goes, I'm good, I'm good, he's like, Chris Rock is about to say more. Like, if this happened in a comedy club, if this was at the comedy store, the comedy cellar, and this act, this happened, he would have went doubly in. Watch him. He's about to. Look at what he, right here, right? I could go. I could go. <laughs> he's ready to get, I mean, he's about to be like, yo, 
you should worry about Jaden's friend's dicks being in her mouth more than her name being in my mouth. You know what I'm saying? Like he is about, he's, he's starting to have the gears turn and man, if he was in any other type of venue other than hosting the Oscars, Oh my Lord. And, and Chris Rock has been at the comedy store all the last, I think it was all last week. He came a couple of nights in a row and, uh, a few of the comics were lamenting in the fact that he bumped them and he did an hour on stage uh, in the OR or whatever. And I think a couple of comics wanted to slap Chris Rock this week, but uh, they didn't. They sat back and, and waited, <laughs> just waited their turns. Uh, but man, it's just a, a wild and a slap like that hasn't been so prevalent on television since the TV show, The Slap. Do you remember that show, Kirsten? Am I the only one who re- remembers that show? I don't know if I remember a show called The Slap. It was briefly on the air. Zachary Quinto played a guy. It was like this Greek family, right? And this kind of rings true for me being a part of a Greek family. It was about a Greek family, and they were all getting together for a uh, for a, a, a party. The opening episode was them getting ready for like a family reunion or a party. And one of the little kids in the family is acting like an asshole. He's just like being a little prick. And Zachary Quinto plays his uncle, and... The kid kicks him in the shin and Zachary Quinto hauls off and slaps him. It was, and then all the other events sort of unravel from that slap. In this case, oh my Lord. I mean, could you imagine just, Will Smith is, is a piece of shit. Let's be honest, right? I mean, come on. The guy fucked himself so hard. He, he, I knew he was going to win Best Actor, by the way. I mean, there was, I mean, I don't know who he was even up against. Half of these movies, I'm so out of uh, the the film. I mean, how many movies have you heard of that were a part of the Oscars, Kirsten? I mean, it's just, it's so removed from pop culture now, even, I feel. I mean, I honestly don't even know what movies were selected for the Oscars because I'm just so far removed from it as a whole. Yeah, like, I haven't gone to the movies since before COVID. And maybe it's on me, but I, I hadn't heard of half of these fucking movies. And uh, Will Smith won for King Richard, which I think is a stupid movie to begin with. Like the fact that he, out of all the movies Will Smith's ever done, he wins for King Richard. A story about not Serena and Venus Williams and their triumphs, but their father. Like in the in today's world where everyone's so woke or whatever, and everyone's like, you know, pro women of color, obviously. You would think the movie would be about their accomplishments with their dad being a side character, but they decided to make a movie not about Serena and Venus, about their father. And it's about how great of a man he is and blah, blah, blah. Correct me if I'm wrong, and maybe we can do a bit of a fact check on this. Serena and Venus had another sister who, like, just straight up died in a car accident or something like that, and they don't even mention her. It's like they're, that person wasn't even a member of their family as far as uh, the film is concerned. Can we see, can you type in Venus Serena other sister and see what this okay so what does it say about her I can't read this oh she was she murdered. was murdered in a shooting in 2003 <laughs> oh my lord in Compton of all places yeah don't think they brought that up in the film King Richard and if they did it was a byline uh, but you know they didn't have you know they didn't have to do anything with that but so Will Smith you know he. He even alluded to this in his acceptance speech about how he's like, Richard protected his family. I don't think he protected that one. What was her name? Yvonne? Yvette? I couldn't tag. It was up there too quickly for me to retain. But again, if you saw the film, you don't retain any of it either. Uh, Yatundi? Yatundi? Yeah, sure. Yatunde? I'm not sure. Sure, yeah, okay. If (laughs) Serena and Venus and Richard... Don't seem to want to bring her up. Uh, I don't think we need to get her name correct either. (laughs) But it's just so wild that he chose that moment to finally stand up to things. And if you watch the clip, not the one that we had, but if you watch the moments that happened prior where uh, Chris Rock made the Jada Pinkett joke about G.I. Jane 2, you can see Will Smith laughing and you see Jada not laughing and then giving the side eye to Will. And it was almost like he was like, ha, 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 ha. Oh, oh, you know, Jada was like, you better get up there and fucking slap him. He wouldn't have done that on his own accord. This is a man that has been cucked constantly by this woman over and over again. She's fucking her son's friends. She's fucking people probably in front of him. I bet after this, she was like, Will, that was so great. And she went and let him watch so hard that night. 
let him watch everything. He chose this moment now to finally rise up. You know, he didn't do it on his own accord. He did it because Jada told him to do it. And now he ultimately ruined his big moment. He finally won an Academy Award after being nominated three times. He finally won his first one and he had to go up there and talk. He's trying to talk about how he's like this vessel of love. And shit. it's like, dude, we just watched you 10 minutes ago walk on stage and slap a dude. What are we talking about here? There's rumor that uh, the Academy, they're doing an investigation now as if like we didn't all just watch what was going on. And by the way, if that was any other human being that walked up on stage, they would have been tackled. They would be arrested. They wouldn't even be they would have never gotten close to Chris Rock. And I even think Chris Rock thought for a moment like Will Smith was going to come up and like fake pretend like he was mad, you know act like uh, he was going to give him a a nuggie or something like that. And that's the way that the vibe was at first. And then when he really slapped him, it was like, oh, shit. I think Chris Rock was caught off guard. And then when he's like, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth, he was like, I could fucking, you want me to go hard on Jada? I can go hard on Jada and you, by the way. Just so wild. And there's so many different uh, angles on Twitter. People are the people that think that it's fake are just I mean, what reality do you live in? It's so bizarre to me. All these people, everything they see, they think is fake. And I don't understand what you think happens behind the scenes. And if you think that the world is just that neat and tidy and orchestrated, it's so insane to me. Like, what benefit does anybody have for that being fake, aside from the Oscars? No one, by the way, neither Chris Rock or uh, Will Smith give a shit about the Oscars ratings. No one cares that wor- that is in that building, other than, you know, the Academy themselves and maybe the network. Other than that, and if it was on NBC and they were promoting that television show, The Slap, then I could understand. <laughs> but they are not. That show is from, like, fucking 10 years ago at this point. And uh, it's just unbelievable to me that people think it's fake. I think it's funny that the racist people are coming out. They're like, oh, Oscar's not so white anymore. That's their big uh, their big fucking tout. They're like, oh, it's it's turned ghetto now. There's, like, a lot of racist uh, tweets out there talking about how, you know, Oscar's so white, not so much anymore. The uh, inner city blacks coming in there and slapping. That was the whitest confrontation I've ever seen. That was two immensely rich men having what they thought was a confrontation. This was no source awards. Let me just put it that way. It was a slap and that was the end of it. If, if that was anyone other than Chris Rock or anyone other than Will Smith, probably would have went down a little bit differently, I would imagine. I'd love to. I mean, the LAPD came in and they asked Chris Rock if he wants to press charges. I, you know, what do you do in that case? Do you press the charges? I wouldn't have pressed the charges. I would have been like, I got slapped. So what? He looked like a real piece of shit. I'm fine. You know, why press the charges? If you're Will Smith, I just can't understand your logic behind behind any of this. Other than the fact that he's just either he is getting cucked to the point where he thought he had to stand up and be a man or something like that. Or I think more than likely Jada Pinkett Smith was like, you better do something about this. And he was like, yes, Jada, whatever you say. Will, just admit you're gay already and come out of the closet. We don't have time for closets in 2022. Just be gay. Rid yourself of the toxic woman that is Jada Pinkett Smith. And so many people are uh, like, oh, you, you know, because Jada Pinkett Smith is a woman of color, they're coming out and saying like, oh, you can't attack her hair like that. It's like, grow up. I mean, how many, I mean, did you watch Ricky Gervais do the uh, fucking whatever award show he did? He eviscerated everybody. That's just what happens. And now the Oscars are probably never going to have a comedian ever again, which is fine. I don't really give a shit either way, but I'm just saying they're going to really neuter the broadcast. And they have for the past couple of years. They really did neuter it quite a bit. And now they are going to cut the balls off of it for sure. And someone else pointed out, they're like, Chris Rock probably didn't even write that joke, and it's been verified that he did not. So he was just, you know, there's uh, there's writers for all award shows. You you know, these guys don't go in there and they have to write like a fucking model. You know, they don't want to have to do that. They pay people to write the jokes for them. Rich Voss wrote for Chris Rock last time he 
did the Oscars. I think Ryan Hamilton was on the uh, writing staff of this one. I don't know who wrote that joke in particular, but it's not like, you know, Will Smith's walking backstage and slapping that person. It's funny. I'm a, uh, my buddy Jesse Joyce wrote for the Oscars many years. He says, you just put on a tux and go smoke out in the hallway. <laughs> That's what he did the entire time. Then you're like, oh, there's Brad Pitt smoking. Cool. And uh, he said it's a pretty fun gig. But I, I can't imagine that Will Smith would have hunted down the uh, the writer of that joke and, and found it out. But, you know, now he's apologized. He's apologized pretty much to everybody other than Chris Rock. He's apologized to the Academy, to his fans. Really not owning, though, the fact that he is a giant hypocrite. Because th- that's the thing with these guys. Like, if Will Smith was, like, a real guy, if he was, like, the real deal, authentic, genuine person, we would have saw that moment as a moment of, you know, being genuine. A moment of authenticity. Oh, he was real in that moment. But we don't know because he's such a fucking put on the whole time. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, he's probably, like I said, he's probably gay and he needs to just be gay. He's like, it'll ruin my street cred. You don't have street cred, buddy. You don't have any of it. You're Will Smith. You're fucking Crayola Crayons. I mean, you are just be what you want to be. It's really sad. You just watched a man just unravel. And then when he went up and gave that fucking speech, that was nonsense. No one's ever going to look back in, on that moment and think, what a moment of triumph for Will Smith. The fact that people were standing and clapping is disgusting to me, too, as if, as if they didn't just watch what occurred. But, hey, I mean, you got an audience full of pedophiles and lunatics, so none of them are being really authentic at the end of the day. It was probably the most Hollywood thing that I have ever seen. Very interestingly enough. You know how we should have handled it? Like this first gentleman that we'll get to as we begin our sports today here on The Josh Potter Show. And that is Kevin Durant. Watch how Kevin Durant handles a heckler. Now... Again, someone could, you could say that maybe he's more in the Chris Rock position than he is in the Will Smith position. And we've seen men, we've seen NBA stars uh, handle things poorly uh, when it comes to people in the in the audience. I mean, malice at the palace. I mean, we've seen them go into the crowd and do things. Kevin Durant handles this like a G. And I'm no Kevin Durant fan, by the way. But listen to him handle this person. You got what did he? What did the guy say? It was a little muffled for me. He was like, "You got to get, you got to put the game on your back" or something like that. Like just trying to like hype up Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant just turns around. You you got to shut the fuck up and sit down. <laughs> that guy was probably like, "Okay, yes, sir. Whatever you say." I love that shit, man. Basketball. I really got to get into going to games more. And when I say that, I mean I got to get more rich so that I can buy courtside seats and start chirping players. I mean Spike Lee does it all the time. You can kind of do it in baseball. You can get outfield seats and kind of chirp the outfielder. That's always fun. I like when they do in baseball, too. They go, like, they'll ask a a, a question that has two sides. They'll be like, hey, you know, pick an outfielder. They'll be like, right hand tits, left hand ass. And then if they do it, they're like, yeah, that's always fun. I don't know if that happens in basketball so much. They don't really get a lot of time where they're standing still like they do in baseball but you can also heckle the hell out of an outfielder i've done it in minor league games when i was a kid i used to go to the games and i used to chirp all the outfielders playing against the buffalo bison and a couple of times i solicited a reaction that was pretty funny like shut the fuck up stuff like that that's oh when they do that that's like fucking oh it's like all the blood rushes to your dick and it gets super duper hard. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by True Niagen. And here's the thing, friend. I have aged over the last two years, and now I need to start trying to see if I can turn the clock backwards. Obviously, you can't do it uh, to profound degrees, but you can do it with True Niagen. I mean, did you know that one of the root causes of aging uh, targets all the cells in your bodies? Life cannot exist without NAD. That's the big deal right there, an essential molecule found in all the living cells. And as you age, NAD can decline uh, by as much as like 50% due to exposure to several stressors, lack of sleep, I have that, sun exposure, maybe not me so much, smoking and alcohol consumption, that's me for sure. 
all these things plus pollution all kinds of different wide ranging effects uh, can happen to your body because of these things and your organs especially as you age so if you discover true niogen one of the most advanced forms of inner body aging science uh, that is proven to increase your nad almost help you age backwards true niogen is researched by the top scientific institutions in the world they've sold over three million bottles and uh, they've actually have an excess of 200 published scientific studies taking it daily helps support muscle heart health and energy production in your cells to help you age better uh, so since taking true niogen, I feel like I'm aging better. You know, it's slowed the things down a little bit that were probably really jacking me up during the whole uh, quarantine time when I was really putting my body through the ringer. And uh, like I said, my mind at peace, knowing that my cells are being taken care of uh, by a brand that is backed by science. And right now, new customers, they can save 20% on their first purchase by going to trueniagen.com slash potter. Use code potter. That's T-R-U-N-I-A-G-E-N dot com slash potter. Use code potter to save 20% on your first purchase. Trueniagen.com slash potter. Use code potter. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Today's Josh Potter Show is also brought to us by DoorDash. Life has been getting busier now that uh, things are starting to progress. I mean, you're back to work. You're going to meetings. You got the kids going to soccer practice. You got this. You got that. If you're like me, I just don't like being bothered by things anyway. DoorDash helps all of us at the end of the day. I mean, hell, you can get groceries. You can get convenience items. You can just get something from your favorite restaurant, whether it be local or whether it be a chain, DoorDash has so many to choose from. Go check it out. Download the app and look for yourself. I mean, geez louise, get what you want to eat right now, right at your door with DoorDash. Boom, it just shows right up there. I mean, along with the restaurants you love, you can get groceries, as I mentioned, other essential items uh, delivered your way. I hate shopping for razors. You got to call the guy over and then he comes over and unlocks the cabinet. DoorDash, boom, comes right to your door. You make someone else do that. And then you tip them nicely because we're good roaches, aren't we? With over 300,000 partners, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or you can choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ordering is easy and your items will be left safely outside your door uh, when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. And for a limited time, my listeners are going to be able to get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when they download the DoorDash app and enter code JOSH. That's 25% off, up to $10 value, and zero delivery fees on their first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store Enter that code JOSH, J-O-S-H. Don't forget, that's code JOSH for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. But baseball is back, and it is back in full force, my friend. I can't wait for opening day to come just a few days from now, as a matter of fact. But spring training has been going on, and we've already just jumped into high gear. Before I get into it, I want to... uh... Well, no, let's just go right into it. What do you say? We have the first uh, instance of a broadcaster already getting out of pocket, back into full swing, is a man ordering churros. This is a broadcaster who decided to order churros on the air. It's spring training, you know. What the hell? Why not? Let's hear it. Churro! (laughs) Churro! Come on up, big man. Partner is ordering churros. Here's my man. He's the best. It's been a couple years since uh, George yes. uh, Churro here at Peoria Sports Complex, and I get his way up. Not here. only watching a big league <laughs> ball game, but enjoying a churro. How are you, my man? <coughs> it's good to see you. Would you like a churro? I would love a churro. Oh yeah! Oh, there we go. Oh yeah! There you are, partner. He can make his way here. He can throw it. You're going to drop a 20 on him? You did a couple years ago. Oh, look at you. Big Here you spender. go, Haas. Big spender. Thanks a lot. That's for you. Wow. Thank you so much, man. You're welcome. Super Tipper! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure out. See, that's how boring spring training games can get. They stayed on. They watched a churro exchange for a good couple of seconds there. That was wild. And the, and the broadcast team is just... 
They're like, it's been a couple of years since I've had one of these churros at Peoria Sports Complex. Could you imagine, if you will, you are such a boring person that you are laying up at night in the throes of COVID. You're going, you know what? I can't wait for COVID to end so I can get back to that Peoria Sports Complex and have a churro. Blech. (laughs) I mean, part of me wants to admire it, but a part of me goes like, Where'd the professionalism go? I mean, it's just melted down. And then he gave him 20 bucks, and he's like, oh, big spender over here. Not really. Have you bought anything at a ballpark recently? (laughs) I mean, that churro probably cost $9. $11 tip? One would argue that's pretty good. It's better than that guy's probably receiving all day. But let's not act like you just fucking bought the guy a car, for Christ's sake. I mean, geez louise. What a moment, though. Churro! Just yelling it. I would have, I mean, if he was ordering a beer, I probably would have a very different narrative regarding it, because that would be fun. Very fun indeed. But also, Nick Castellanos, now he's on a brand new team, you see. During the offseason, he became a free agent, no longer on the Cincinnati Reds, where just the most marquee incident ever in the history of baseball, in my opinion, occurred. And that's when Tom Brenneman made his legendary apology, one that we've gone over on this program, even with the man himself, back a few episodes back. Not sure. I can't remember what episode number it is. It's in the 50s, I believe. But Tom Brenneman came on this program to discuss it in person. And he told everyone, I have to apologize. I'm a man of faith, and there's a line drive by Castellanos, and that makes it a 4-0 game for the Reds. So we all know, I mean, it's gone on. Even, hell, I've seen memes of Will Smith apologizing, throwing the Castellanos in there as well. But Nick Castellanos has signed with the Philadelphia Phillies, and he made his first appearance with the Philadelphia Phillies in spring training, and you'll never guess what happened. Uh, Charlie Montoya and Pete Walker sitting on the bench, and... Rosado gets a strikeout, and of course Pete Walker was unfortunately arrested early Friday morning for driving under the influence, and he made a statement apologizing for his actions. Obviously, a very significant situation. Charlie Montoya, his quote is: "He said the Blue Jays and I are aware of what happened, the incident involving Pete Walker, but we're." Still gathering information out of respect for the process. That's all we're going to say right now. And the Blue Jays, as an organization, have taken the same path. So, unfortunately, a very significant situation with Pete Walker, very highly respected pitching coach. But the Blue Jays and the organization are going to wait until all of the information is gathered. So he is continuing to serve as the pitching coach. And He's been here today watching these Blue Jays pitchers so far. Three pitchers today, and we're scheduled to see Thomas Hatz, Julian Merriweather, and maybe Anthony Castro throughout the course of this game. That looper, that's going to drop for a base hit. Castellanos reached out and poked it into right field. Now he picks up a two out base hit. Castellanos has been aboard twice now with a walk and a single. Now, that was his first hit as a Philadelphia Philly, but. What are we doing? I mean, it, it, you know when Castellanos is coming to the plate. The order is there for you. You can kind of gauge it. Why are we doing it? Unless it's deliberate. And I'm starting to st- sound like these fucking loons on Twitter who think like things like the Will Smith slap are fake. I'm starting to think that they are deliberately putting apologies when Castellanos comes to the plate. I mean, what other explanation? They know what's going to happen. This one didn't so much interrupt... Uh, things you know it didn't interrupt the play it didn't sound jarring it seemed like he wrapped up the apology by the way on behalf of the pitching coach for the Blue Jays it wasn't like he was doing it himself it wasn't like he was up there and he was I don't care about that not a fig I had the wrong button but it wasn't like you know he was up there and he's like I gotta make an apology I uh, last night I got a DUI yeah I had a few beers after the game and Decided to drive like an asshole. Got pulled over, blew a point four oh, holy hell, you know, it was almost dead. Oh, and there's a liner by a looper by Castellanos. That'll fall, and now he's gotten on base twice with a single and a walk. 
But yeah, no, I, I, I didn't kill anybody, thank God. I just ran my car into a pole, partner. Can I get a churro? Churro, please. That would have been a little more jarring. This one was on behalf of the pitching coach. They read a statement, and then he could have wrapped it up and then had the hit occur. It's not like Castellanos interrupted him this time around. But again, the man came up to the plate, and you start reading an apology. You're trying to go viral. I feel like they're really ham-fisting it now. And I saw somebody, uh, I don't think we have a, the image of it, but there was so many people, a deluge of human beings sent me pictures. And I love when you guys send things in, by the way, and you can continue to send things in. Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. Send in your Roach reports, send in any music you create, whatever you want, whether it just be feedback to the show or whatever. But so many people sent off to Josh Potter Show at gmail.com the picture of the, of the tattoo of somebody getting the actual transcript of the Tom Brenneman apology transcribed on their bodies and I'm thinking maybe if I do get a tattoo it might have to be that where would I where should I get it Kirsten where's a good place for that like my wrist I don't know it's a long one I don't know I feel like you could just blow out your whole back with it just a oh, whole just get it like a script on my back like get it all like sons of anarchy font absolutely like a biker font that would be wild Today's Josh Potter Show is also brought to us by Babbel. And for most of us, learning a second language in high school or college wasn't exactly, you know, the high point of our academic careers, right? I mean, I had a teacher named Miss Bailey. This lady was the worst. The worst. I didn't want to learn anything from this lady. But thanks to Babbel now, uh, the language learning app that sold over 10 million subscriptions. There is an addictively fun and easy way to learn a new language. It's like having uh, any of the games on your phone, too. It's it's just addictive. It's like, oh, I want to do this all the time. You start crushing out lessons. Lickety split. I mean, whether you're traveling abroad or connecting in a deeper way with family or you have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons that you'll actually use in the real world. They've got 15-minute lessons that make it a perfect way to learn a new language on the go. And other language learning apps, they use AI for their lesson plans. But Babbel, they're better because their lessons were created by over 100 language experts. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective, and you can choose from over 14 different languages, including Spanish, French, Italian, German, plus Babbel speech recognition technology helps you improve your pronunciation and accent. So it's not just reading. I mean, you get to communicate with your phone. You get to say words and find out if you're saying them correctly or not. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel, and right now you can save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash josh. That's babbel.com slash josh for up to 60% off your subscription. B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash josh. It's Babbel, language for life. I did notice you had pictures from Mile High Stadium up there. Do we have that video of Sussel first? So Sussel Wilson, now a member of the Denver Broncos, of course, the Colorado Rockies, they decided to give Russell Wilson a jersey. And if you don't know, Russell Wilson at one point, because of the way baseball works, they just draft, they could, any everybody on the earth is eligible for baseball drafts, evidently. And so Russell Wilson, one time long ago, was drafted by the Colorado Rockies. And now that he's come back to Denver, or I guess come to Denver in general, the Rockies sent him a jersey and he decided to thank them. Listen to this video. Very, uh, let's just say this video, very much like another uh, audio tape we heard earlier on in this program back in the day. It is Ask Marty time. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear it. These jerseys, you guys are pulling this out. Come on, dude. Colorado Rockies jersey. This is too dope. This reminds me when I first got drafted in baseball. I got drafted June 8, 2010. The next day, my dad passed away. It's the highest of the high. Hold on. Does it pause? What? Oh, what? <laughs> He's like smiling. He's like, man, this is dope. You know, I was drafted by the Colorado Rockies, and then the next day, my dad passed away. What? The highest of the high, the lowest of the low. It's like he's looking back on it fondly. It's just a strange dynamic to throw in there. Continue it, please. Lowest of the low. But, uh, man, man, this is cool. Appreciate you guys. It's the Rockies. It's the Rockies jersey. Oh, this reminds me of my dad dying. <laughs> so cool. Thanks, Rockies. <laughs> like, what the fuck? <laughs> So, Sussel is full-on Sussel right now. I mean, this is going to get 
gnarly out there in Denver. And uh, the day after that happened, Mile High Stadium had sort of a phenomenon occur. And this is omen shit right here, if you ask me. Look at these images of Mile High Stadium. A fire broke out in the stands. Just There was nothing going on. Look at this shit. How did this happen? I'll tell you how. It's the Sussel Curse. Oh my lord. Just the whole section up in flames. Now imagine that happening with, you know, 15,000 people in the stands or 49,000, however many they can fit up there in Mile High Stadium. Bananas. Yeah, Russell just getting dark there. He's like, man, thanks, Rockies. Thanks for reminding me my dad died. It is Ask Marty time. Yeah, yeah. Let's get to the news, shall we? Ba-dum, bum, ba bum 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 ba Boy, oh boy, the Roach Reporter's out in full force. I have a whole stack of news from Roach Reporter, sending them into Josh Potter Show at gmail.com. And this one comes to us from C. Riley. C. Riley out there being a Roach Reporter. It's about airline. Airline passengers have not calmed down, even though things have relaxed in terms of COVID. Maybe airports uh, aren't as flush with human beings hell i went to lax on wednesday night and it was like dead as a doornail it was perfect you still have to wear the masks so people still up in arms about the masks. but i think that's even going away soon you know i know it's a federal sort of thing with the with the transportation yada 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 the faa Uh, but i think they're gonna lift that soon even uber drivers have stopped caring like i got into an uber today thinking i have to wear the mask and the guy was like, what's up, boss? Didn't have a mask on. I go, all right, fuck this shit. So I took mine off. I think it's going to start getting that way on the airplanes very soon as well. Uh, but let's see what happened with this. A banned airline passenger decided to spit at a cop. And then after that, he pooped in a patrol car. Soon after that, he fleed on a motorized suitcase. They have motorized suitcases? Whatever for. Yeah, you can, like, sit on them and then just ride them around like a little cart. What? Show me one of these. This is asinine. We're this lazy. Just buy a wheelchair and give up. You know? (laughs) You have to fucking get a motorized suitcase for. And people just ride on these things. If I saw a person in the airport riding on one of these fucking things, I would clothesline them. I would be like, Gush! Walk like a person! Drag your fucking bag. Look at this one. It's like a fucking scooter. How do you pack that shit? You can't. That's not a carry on. Anywho, let's see what happened here. A woman barred from boarding a flight to the Big Apple because she appeared drunk, led police on a wild chase on her motorized suitcase before allegedly spitting at a cop and defecating in a patrol car. Her name is Chelsea. She's 32. She's seen on the Bizarre Pursuit in newly released body cam video at Orlando International Airport. Let's see if we can pull up this body cam footage of this lady. Chelsea Alston, Orlando International Airport, scooter, motorized, or I guess, look at these fucking 90s words on these fucking scooters here. God, I want to, I, I just want to drop kick one of them off of those fucking things. God, people are fucking stupid. Uh, so she was wasted and she, uh, the gate agent told her she appeared too intoxicated and refused to allow her to take the flights. Uh, I don't want no beef. I'm just trying to go home and enjoy myself. She said repeatedly claiming she had consumed just two drinks, but she was probably like, I I just want to go home. The, the fact that I've gotten on airplanes, borderline comatose on NyQuil or Xanax or whatever, how, what, how out of pocket you got to be for these people who, by the way, are barely looking at you as you pass by and scan your thing. You got to be so out of pocket for them to notice and kick you off the plane. It's got to be insane. Police officer Andrew Mamone responded and told her she was banned because of her glassy eyes and her inability to stand up straight and the odor of booze emanating from her. It's okay, you just need to go over to the terminal and sober up a little bit, get another flight. That's dumb, too. That is a bad policy. If I'm them, I go, get her on the plane and get her out of here as quick as possible. We want her hanging out in the airport, especially if she's got one of these stupid motorized suitcases. She's just drunk driving that thing around, running into the fucking newsstand and shit. She's going over to whatever that store is, the Hudson 
report or whatever. <laughs> She's fucking running into the magazines and crap. Uh, she uh, proceeded to wave her middle finger at him and unleash a stream of profanities. These are all blurred out, but I'm just going to say them because this is an adult show. Fuck you, suck my dick, this woman shouted. When women say suck my dick, it's always odd to me. Like, what are you saying that for? I get it. It's a colloquialism for fuck you, basically. But suck my dick. I mean, Kirsten, do you say suck my dick? No, not typically. Yeah, because you don't have not one, often right? At all. I would say suck my clam before I'd fucking say suck my dick if I was a woman, you know? Come up with a better one. We're going to have a bike pursuing a suitcase in a minute, the officer says as he chases the getaway suitcase on his bicycle. Golly. We got to get the fucking cops to get us to get these suitcases i guess at the end of the day so uh the the police officer he's heard to have said oh man that thing kind of goes fast which is also stupid why does it go fast do we have the video here <laughs> oh yeah let's see it does it have sound we going to blame it on but oh, watch out with your uh your, your whip there. Oh, look out there. It's about how you feel. It's about how you, 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 you appear with the level of intoxication. How am I appearing? So, well, you're kind of swaying back and forth. Your eyes are glassy. The alcohol is, like, emitting from you. You can tell you've been Hold on, pause a while, it. okay? I think she's just fine right now. Get her on the fucking plane and get her out of here. That's what I say. And by the way, she's not even, this is her real issue. She's not standing up from th these motorized suitcases are going to be the downfall of society. If you ask me, she's not even standing up. They're like, she's swaying side to side. Give her a DUI then because she's riding around on this fucking thing. Keep it going here. Let's see how she. You might think if I have the cup in my hand, you don't, that's not in my body. No, my no. Even if you're without the cup, we can kind of tell, you know. <laughs> You're, you're without the cup now. The cup's empty. Right, but then you still probably smell the Need you to go to the terminal. See. Suck my. Oh, I can suck my. Okay, pause it there. She's the saying terminal. "suck my dick" repeatedly, uh, which again is odd. That's what they were beeping out there. She was going "suck my dick, suck my, suck my fucking dick, suck it." Not gonna get you on the plane. And as she rolls off on her fucking R word mobile. These fucking things. I am disgusted by the sheer fact that these exist. Let's watch her roll away. And then he's going to have to chase this bitch. I'll, I'll help see her out. You guys are good. Got almost the whole plan on. Get it, give her a DUI. She's operating a motor vehicle. Oh, man, that thing kind of goes fast. <laughs> So he's going to get on his bicycle? Why do he have a bicycle in, in O'Hare? Or, or Orlando International Airport, excuse me. We got a bike pursuing a suitcase. Let's see how far this bitch goes. Up. Into the tram. I hope they have footage of her shitting in the cop car, too. I hope that's how far this goes. All you got to do is book another flight. Maybe 20 hours more. I need to go home today. Right. Chelsea, you gotta get off here. Go ahead. Chelsea, you gotta get off or the doors are gonna close. She is riding this thing like a handicapped person. If I'm... Pause it for one second. If I am ridden into a wheelchair for the rest of my existence, and I see some dumb bitch riding around on one of those, I want to run her over. I'll blow in my straw and run her ass over with my fucking wheelchair because this is appropriating wheelchair culture if you ask me walk like everyone else in the fucking airport please show me her shitting in the cop car I don't know what to do I'm just riding around my fucking Chelsea, can you do me a favor? Now she's crying Can you roll with me to the to the main terminal? You can't hang out here, it's a secured area you leave me alone and shoot me as if we're gonna Yes, I will. Chelsea, I want to leave you alone. I just I'm need you. Chelsea, I will just leave you alone. Yeah, follow me. Follow me, Chelsea. We'll, we'll roll out together. Oh my god, she's acting like she's paralyzed rolling on this fucking thing. Chelsea, I'll race you. Yeah, that's a good idea, officer. 
Smart call. You won't let her get on a plane, but let's race on our fucking vehicles. I, she just rolls into the tram track. I gotta have you on the other side, TSA, and then I promise you I will leave you alone. Let me explain something to you. I'm a representative of the Orlando Police Department, and I have been nothing but polite and professional with you. Chelsea, Chelsea, look at me. Chelsea, look, look at me. Chelsea, look at me. You. Now she's saying, fuck you, fuck you. Oh, look, she picked it up. There you go. She's gone. She's gone. She spit at me. She spit on him. I missed that part. Can we go, can we go back a second? Where did she spit on him? She's gone. She spit at me. Chelsea, look at me. Chelsea, look, look at me. Chelsea, look at me. You. Chelsea, Was that the spit right there? Yeah, she just, it looked like she just hawked a loogie on the floor. She just hawked on the ground. Yeah. This guy sucks. This cop is a fucking dolt. First of all, now she's walking with it, which is like probably wise. So she doesn't get a DUI. And he was nice to her and shit, but it's like, man, arrest her and shut her up already. So finally, they're leaving the concourse here. They get her to leave. And she has yet to defecate in the cop car. I can't wait till they get to that point. Let's see what else occurs here. Do you spit at me? She's gone. She's gone. She's spit at me. Chelsea, you are under arrest. Put your hands behind your back now. Chelsea, you are under arrest. Put your hands back now. <laughs> oh, now he gets up in arms. Could have saved yourself an hour here, dude. Stop spitting. Now she's spitting. Do not spitting. spit. Do, spit one time. Do not. I only spit one time. 187, go, go She's not spitting. She's puking, sir. Is she hitting her head? No. Nope. nope. Stop. 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 Oh my god, that's real fucking Looney Tune Chelsea, behavior banging your head against reverse, shit. Reverse. Oh, put her on her suitcase and wheel her out of there. Right here we here. go, here we go. Chelsea, we're gonna go in the car nice and easy, alright? Slide in. I don't know what she's cursing there. Watch your feet. And that's the end of that. Well, I guess they didn't show it. Evidently, when she got into that cop car, she shit her pants. If only she'd done it on that stupid scooter. What a great story. See, Riley. Bravo, sir, for coming through with that one. So good finding the video as well. And man, do I have a new enemy in life, and that is people who ride. I have not seen one of these yet. I have not witnessed anybody sitting on their suitcase driving it around, but when I do, I might commit assault. This one coming to us by way of Jake Marchesani. I hope I'm saying that correctly, or is it Marcasani? I'm not sure. Very Italian name and very wonderful that it comes from a, a paisan because this is about a pizza person. It has to do with pizza. Let's just put it that way. Uh, Cairo's Pizza in Skipack, Pennsylvania, suffered a blunder of epic and slightly pornographic proportions this past week. No, it wasn't accusations of frozen sauce or low-grade ingredients. Instead, it was a fatal misprint on a new mailer's that caused trouble for the restaurant. Those of you familiar with the internet memes will recognize that... Uh, this man's face. Oh, you know what this was? This was them putting out a mailer that had our boy Wood from the pandemic on it. And if you remember the story of Wood, it was people were getting text messages that were saying, oh, uh, here's a new COVID protocol or something like that. And then you open it up and it's our friend Wood with his giant black penis on there. We all remember the meme. Everyone got it sent to them. He became a phenomenon around the world, only to find out that it is an old picture and the man has deceased. Evidently, somebody either trying to fuck with this pizza company or them trying to sneak one by and get viral. Evidently, this man was on the flyer. Uh, it says they made an apology. It says, Dear Community... We have may, been made aware of the situation regarding our recent ad because they put this flyer out. You know, you get these things in your, sometimes they come up in your door, they're in your mailbox, some new new pizza place in town. Cool. Here's the menu. Awesome. Well, in this case, a little extra treat in there. Uh, we have been made aware of the situation regarding a recent ad and unfortunately neither us or the Community Connections proofreaders caught the subtle nature of what we thought was a tasteful photo 
of a cappuccino. Oh, boy. That's right. That's what the image was, Kirsten. It was Wood with his big old black penis in one of those froths. You know how they make the art? Yeah, it's like a little latte art. Yeah, it was a little latte art in the ad. So it was very hidden and some people caught on. But if you're a person who sees that, you know the meme. So once you go, ha, 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 and then just go, this pizza place is pretty cool. I'm going to order 10 pizzas. I would. I'd be like, what a funny little pizza place. And then I buy, I go, oh, I'm going to give them my business. Who's out there? No one who would is getting up in arms. I wish we, do, do you think you can uh, see if we can search for it? I want to see how accurate it was. Because again, if you don't know the meme, I would have just looked at this froth and been like, well, it's just some froth. I would have never recognized that it was our, our, our man would. We deeply apologize for letting this slip. Let's say they're, they're giving their own Castellanos apology here. We have to give an apology on behalf of Cairo's Pizza here in Skippic, PA. It's Nick Castellanos is coming to the plate. Evidently, a mailer went out, friend, uh, where a man with a giant black penis was in the froth of the cappuccino. Oh, won the count, Castellanos. Taking a second. Stepping out of the box. I don't know what this could have looked like. Uh, how people would have recognized it, evidently. Some people up in arms. Raising a flag with the Community Connections proofreaders. Some artist out there in a great deal of trouble, but... Cairo's Pizza wants to apologize as there's Castellanos with a looper. And there's a single as he gets on the bag for the first time today. Speaking of bags, look at that one hanging on wood, huh? What an error. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. How would you know what it is if you don't know the meme? And if you know the meme, how do you not laugh it off? People are just 90 words galore today. Just, uh... Can't abide. I don't care about that. Not a fig. Not a fig. Can't abide such a dis idiocy any longer. This one comes to us by way of Robert Collister. Oh, you have it. Look at that. Just in the nick of time. How detailed is that? Zoom in, if you will. I cannot tell what that is. I mean, we are getting, what is the word? Optimize, optimize. Oh, yeah, his penis is pretty evident on there. Do we have to blur that? Is it that evident? I don't know. It's a cappuccino art. But boy, oh boy, that would be something. If someone made that, put give them a fucking, uh, you know, put them in a museum. I mean, if that was truly made with a latte, that person is an artist to the level of Banksy, for Christ's sake. I mean, goddamn. But uh, sorry if you have to blur that, Kirsten. Good find indeed. Uh, but this story, again, coming from Robert Collister. It's about a man in Dayton, Ohio. What a town, Dayton, Ohio. Had many a party there. The old Flyers, the college out there, that, that's a fun place to party, Dayton, Ohio. This man in Dayton, Ohio is facing indecency charges after a witness reported seeing him attempt to have sex with the front grill of a van parked on the street. Tough look. I mean, at what point does just jerking your dick to porn become too vanilla you know you're like god i gotta fuck something how about the metal grill of a car i can think of like 10 things that i would fuck that would hurt and that i would never want to fuck you know that's like fucking shredders that's like face fucking shredder is what you just described is fucking the grill of a car your face fucking shredders mask you're like i want a blow job from shredder with the mask on like, what kind of psycho shit is that? I wonder what kind of car it is. Officers responding to a call Tuesday evening found the suspect, a 35-year-old Michael Henson, wearing only a pair of black shorts and black shoes, according to NBC4. Uh, Henson was taken into custody and put into the back of a squad car while officers spoke to a female witness. She said she saw Henson pull down his shorts and put his genitals into the front grill of a red van parked on the side of the road. Maybe the grill was warm. So he's just kind of putting his pee-pee in there just to see if it was like, ooh, it's nice and warm feeling. It feels warm and gasoline-ish. Like, what the fuck? I mean, I'm, you're, you're looking at a guy who is still trying to figure out how to come inside of a woman into a vagina, like the most optimum place to come into. 
Do you know what I mean? I'm still trying to figure that out. And a mouth and all the all the regular things. I couldn't even imagine my penis getting hard at the idea of fucking a metal grill of a van. Especially if it's like burning you. Oh my lord. Uh, so when the suspect passed out in the front yard near the van, that must have been, that van must have really fucking sucked his dick good. Must have made him nut hard because he just passed out in the lawn afterwards. Uh, Henson woke up and was walking before police came to the scene, according to the Dayton Daily News. Officers who questioned him said he appeared to be intoxicated. No shit. He's fucking a van. What if this guy's just like a real creep and he watches the movie Cars and is like, oh, look at that one's hot. You know how they make like the girl car like sexy? He's like, oh, I'm going to fuck this van over here. I just get cars just make me fucking hard as a rock. I'm a real gearhead. Police contacted the owner of the van who allegedly said he was unaware of any incident. <laughs> he just comes out. He's like, the car's like, he's like, what's going on? Oh, I've got a load in my grill. That's tough. I wonder what that would do. I don't know. No, I don't know enough about cars to f- know what the uh, impact of jizzing on the engine would do to the way it works ne- necessarily. Henson was booked on public indecency charges and taken to the Montgomery County Jail, where he remained on a two hundred uh, two thousand and five hundred dollar bond until his arraignment on Wednesday. So. They didn't give him any psych help or anything. Maybe he's just some drunk guy who just thought, I got to put my dick in something warm. Here's something metal. Giving off steam. I don't know. Uh, Let's see. What else do we have here to wrap up on on the program today? What a show. What a show indeed. Boy, oh boy. This one coming to us by way of uh, Luke Rutz. And this involves quite an incident here. Uh, one that perhaps involves uh, uh, murder. It's called ass suffocation. That's the headline, and I think that's a perfect place to end. Boy, oh boy, how I can think of many a way to go out in this world. An ass suffocation would be right up there. If I could talk to Dr. Jack Kevorkian and get to pick my way that he murders me, you know, or euthanizes me, I guess is a better word. I would like to be euthanized by an ass. That would be fun. A recent arrest affidavit alleges that a Texas woman killed her roommate by sitting on her until she suffocated. Sounds like a fun time to me. Gloria Ann Jordan, 41, was arrested by police on charges of manslaughter on Tuesday. The Wichita Falls Police Department alleges that she killed her roommate, Gloria Farmer, uh... On November 21st, law enforcement originally said Farmer's death was medical after being called to the home, uh, which they shared with a third roommate. However, they ordered a follow-up investigation after a family friend came forward a few days later with concerns. They were like, there's shit all over her face. How did the shit get there? Suffocation by ass. That's like a Sherlock Holmes comes in. He goes, elementary, my dear Watson. Notice the shit around her mouth. Suffocation by ass. Oh, oh, murder. Law enforcement officers questioned Farmer's roommate, who reportedly said that Jordan might have caused Farmer's death. She told police that she hadn't any, uh, said anything to them on the day of the death because she was afraid of Jordan. Yeah, with that ass going around suffocating people, I'd be afraid too. You never know when it's going to come for you. According to an affidavit, the roommate stated that Jordan put her hand on Farmer's forehead while praying and pushed her backward in an office chair until the chair fell over. Court documents say that Jordan then straddled Farmer's body, sitting on her chest, while Farmer told her to get off because she couldn't breathe. The roommate reportedly tried to move Jordan off of Farmer, but the other woman is said to have stayed in her position until Farmer stopped breathing. How fat was this fucking bitch? Jesus. She's just sitting on her to the point she's like, I can't breathe. It's like Yokozuna up in here. What, what, can you Google Yokozuna's finishing move? I was like the fucking, it was something racist, you know, because Yokozuna was like Samoan and he played like a Japanese guy in wrestling. And uh, he would do this thing where he would like get up onto the middle turnbuckle and then just plop his ass down onto, because uh, he had such a wagon, Yokozuna. I forget what it was called, though. It was like, it wasn't like, uh, you know. Hiroshima or something like that. That would have been an interesting one, but it had to be pro Japanese, obviously. What was it called? Does it say anywhere? Something the something bonsai bon- drop. The bonsai. I knew it was racist of some kind. 
the bonsai drop. So this lady bonsai dropped her roommate, basically. She must have been of Yokozuna size. An autopsy report found that Farmer's death had been caused by mechanical asphyxia and said that the manner of death was, in fact... Oh, oh, murder. Police reportedly questioned Jordan on November 24th at the hospital where she had been admitted for an unrelated medical condition, probably just being fat or something like that. Jordan allegedly admitted the, to pushing Farmer over and straddling her body in a prayer position with her hands on Farmer's forehead, but refused to answer any further question. She's also facing charges related to a separate incident. Uh, police allege that she slammed a woman's head into a wall multiple times while shouting, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. So this lady's insane. She's like one of these, she's like a Jesus lady who decides to murder in the name of the uh, name of Jesus and all that. Jordan was arrested by Burke Burnett police on Tuesday, shortly after the Wichita Falls Police Department and Crime Stoppers uh, looked out for the public's help in finding her. The latter organization had offered a reward of $1,000 for information leading to her arrest. Look for the woman with the huge ass that can crush people. Good golly. Again, though, suffocation by ass. Not a terrible way to go if it's the right kind of ass, my friend. And if you do indeed, I, you know, just make it a gas mask for me at some point if I'm trying to clock out. You know what I mean? Give me one of those ass gas masks i'd like to pick the ass though too you know and maybe not this one maybe not this yokozuna type but nevertheless what a show indeed i still have so many of your reports to get to for next time here on the program thank you for joining us in the roach motel once again and boy oh boy if you have a mechanical suitcase just stop listening to the program god do i hate you but i love you for real all the crumbs that are left behind i do hope you join us again next week in the meantime shows on sale for indianapolis may 19th philadelphia june 2nd gonna be in san diego in july chicago in august those are all on sale and you can get links to them up in my instagram at josh underscore potter in the bio or on twitter at j underscore potter in the bio or just fucking google it you know you'll find the links very excited indeed and also i'll be with andy letterman in a couple of weeks here over uh, up in san francisco at Cobb's comedy club get subscribe to the patreon some juicy stories coming this week about about my vegas trip my second one in a friggin week basically uh so i hope you get subscribed there the link's in the bio it's only five bucks a month easy peasy lemon squeezy baby other than that Keep subscribing, rating, and reviewing if you listen on audio, if you're listening or watching on YouTube, I should say. Make sure you hit the bell when you subscribe so you get notifications. Leave a little comment. Say hello. Let us know you're out and about, my little roach. And we will see you next Tuesday right here on The Josh Potter Show.